year 11 we are on our final frame which is the postmodern frame and it's my favorite and i'm gonna leave um that for you to figure out why it possibly my favorite frame there is when it comes to postmodern frame it will depend on who you talk to that has this view that the postmodern frame can be the hardest one um, to understand I have found in my experience that with my my students, it's not necessarily the hardest um, frame for students. Um, I have in the past had two mentor teachers. One was my lecturer, um, university lecturer, um, Miss Barty, and you know Miss Ryder. She's my mentor teacher, and and they um, have taught me or actually shared with me the same views that the postmodern frame is not necessarily the hardest one for our students because this is your world and this is how you view it and appropriation is prolific in the social media um, and that's that's something that is a strength so um, we're going to ignore that the first first sentence of this is it's the most difficult we're going to ignore that because my view and experience has been something that that is quite different quite the polar opposite okay um, so the postmodern frame takes its name from postmodernism look it up research it put it down in your art terminology in your key terms which is a movement of wide-ranging ideas and theories that have influenced literature politics philosophy and art three of my favorite things politics philosophy and art literature i do read but my literature is based on politics to give you an idea currently i am reading um, utopia for realist and the communist manifesto which relates to politics. So politics, philosophy, and art, favorite things. Um, there is no single de uh, a definite definition of postmodernism. So that's the difficult part of it, is that there is not one single definition of postmodernism. There's a collective of ideas, okay, theories, okay, um, influence, literature, po politics, philosophy and art so there's a collective of those things that can mean a definition of postmodern that's the difficult part okay everything else is pretty easy easy and fun so postmodern thinkers reject the idea of absolute truths and universal laws by sometimes turning these um, on their head now previously i've always loved that notion where um, rejecting the idea of absolute truth and universal laws. However, present time now, I have seen the danger of that and the danger of that and how this makes sense to you is fake news. Okay, um, when fake news, and I'll give you an example where it's damaging, where there are theorists out there that, um, conspiracy theorists, okay, that say mass school shootings didn't happen, it was fake. That is dangerous, okay, that is not good. That is, the, that is a negative influence Okay, and their basis or, or um, the way or why they do it would be um, postmodern. It challenges the hell values, you know, it's, it's challenging and it's re rejecting the idea of absolute truth. That's dangerous. Okay, we don't want to do that. <laughs> Morally, it's wrong. Okay, but we can explore those in art. Okay, so there's a sense of danger, 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 danger. Okay. All right, so for instance, all right, um, Frederick uh, Nitsch, Nitsch, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but he's a radical German philosopher um, and he's quite famous, okay, because he declared in the 19th century that God is dead, okay, um, and it questions the relevance of God um, at that time. It was a radical concept at the time and it represents a postmodern thinking okay we operate from these past um, philosophies the way that we view the world the way that we perhaps behave in the world the way that we do things is um, is a contribution to these past philosophies or these ideas okay 
Um, so postmodern challenges the historical held values concerning culture and what is good taste. It also questions what art is. Okay, so a painter, um, Roy Lichtenstein, he is um, a, our case study. We will be exploring him in depth, but he challenged the concept of high art and low art. Okay, high art, low art. When he reproduced comics, as paintings so this would actually be a really good opportunity for those students that are in the class that are looking at animation okay that are looking at those cartoon characters this is one of your key art artists that you need to explore okay and you cannot stress that enough if that if you're looking at animation you're looking at disney you're looking at cartoons roy lynchenstein is your man okay all right so what did he do so his work explored um, is explored further in the chapter case study. Um, so historically, the dominant view was that oil paintings were culturally valuable and were to be hung in the galleries and palaces or at least the homes of the wealthy. Comics, on the other hand, were seen as childish, mass-produced and entertainment for the un undiscerning, which is the lay people, okay? The lay people. Postmodernism challenged the established ideas of what is valuable and significant and what is not. So a postmodern modernist would question whether the opera by Mozart um, is better than a three-minute rap by Jay-Z. Now, you're going to say at your age, okay, that Jay-Z is better than Mo Mozart. That's because, one, your age, two, um, maybe your education in regards to, to music. And when I say education, um, you know, what is your education? Uh, is, do we have music students in, in the class that are studying music? Might have a different value of Mozart versus Jay-Z because they can say, hang on a second, it's two different, um, you know, music genres. We can't actually compare the two. Um, they would be analysing it a little bit differently. You yourself, if you are not studying music as a, as a subject, you're going to say, well, Jay-Z, because of the time that you have existed. Mozart was previous, like previously, even before I existed, even though you may believe I'm, I'm an old wretched witch, uh, Mozart was not around when I was growing up. But there are different values Okay, um, a postmodernist would say, but why? Why is Mozart better than Jay-Z? And they would question that and they would challenge that. Okay, and they would challenge it. Who has the authority to make this judgment? Who is the people, the person, at, who are they? Who are they to make this authority to make this judgment how dare you tell me that Mozart is better than Jay-Z but who are these people making these um, decisions for the collective of society so artists who work in postmodern ways often appropriate okay appropriate images from other sources such as Lichtenstein um, when he copied the comics Okay. That's what he did. He appropriated them. Okay, So appropriated is more than copy and paste. All right, please learn that. Appropriation is the use of borrowed elements in the creation of a new work. All right. Okay, so in doing so, they change the context in which the image is viewed. They recontextualize the image and create a new meaning. Okay, in the example um, with the case study of Roy Lichtenstein, the original context of the image would have been a small picture, mechanically printed, surrounded by similar images in a comic book. So envision a comic book. There are many squares, rectangles with um, images. They're surrounded. It's not just one particular portrait. There's many images to convey a narrative, a storyboard as such. Okay, so that's where the comic originates from. Okay, so the artist changes the context and the image is now reproduced, he reproduces it as a large oil painting in a gallery. So that tiny little image that came out of a very small publication is reproduced, appropriated into an oil painting. That is appropriation, taking an image from a comic book, small image, mass produced, flipping it on its head, using oil, okay, 
oil painting oh la la the materials are there the traditional you know they're the traditional materials that have the significant value of art but the actual um the actual image is from a comic so you've got these elements rich in traditions and then you have an image that comes from low art so there's that high art versus low art okay um all right so now the oil painting is in an art gallery it's watched over by security personnel to ensure no one touches it okay so it goes from a comic that many people touch to someone do not cross that white line there is a line sometimes it's white sometimes it's not when you do get close um, to a painting or a sculpture, any type of artwork in a gallery space, there is security and they will ask you to move. Do have a bad habit, terrible bad habit of getting really close and trying to view how they actually do things. So the image on the opposite page is a student's work. So we're looking at students work here. Okay, so I can't stress that enough. Every time we look at a frame, we always have student examples. Okay, because this is the quality, the refinement, the sophistication that we're looking for in your work. Okay, so the image on the opposite page, a student has appropriated what? Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. It's the most famous portrait. You've learned about this since year seven, okay? And added a barcode sticker. So what do you think the artist is trying to say? By the barcode. What is the signs and the symbols in the barcode? What does, what does the student try to convey in this artwork what can we do to help us understand the art artists a little bit more we read the citation student work she has a hot price 2017 digital print 34 by 26 centimeters and it's the artist in the artist collection so the barcode, without seeing the title, the barcode, mass consumption, everything that we can consume, everything that we go into the shop has the barcode. There is another um, unlawfully um, connotation with the, the, the barcode. There is a criminal element. Is it, it could, for, for when I view the work, is there a criminal element in Mona Lisa? Yeah, I think there is. There is a criminal element in the mass production of many teeny tiny little souvenirs of Mona Lisa. Is that criminal? Yeah, I think it is. Um, but that's my, my um, unpopular uh, opinion. Um, the title suggests she has a hot price. It is very expensive. Mona Lisa is very expensive. Um, if you've actually seen the size of Mona Lisa and attach that to the price, and I'm not going to say the price, I'm going to get you to actually investigate the size versus the price of Mona Lisa. That's your, that's your little side little hustle. I want you to, to have a look at the size of Mona Lisa and the price. Do you justify that? Then ask yourself, she has a hot price with the barcode. She has a hot price. Is she selling? Are they selling her? What is the act of selling a female? <laughs> Another criminal element. As we dig deeper, we can uncover these different IDs, these different, the different visual language, the different concepts, okay? Um, the image also refers to the artist, Marcel Duchamp, a favorite artist, favorite artist, and he, um, what he actually did. So this idea of appropriating Mona Lisa, this student, um, is not the first person to actually do it. Okay. Marcel Duchamp did this and he drew a simple mustache. It's my favorite, favorite, favorite Mona Lisa is the Mona Lisa with a mustache. Again, check that out. Then have a look at the price, Marcel Duchamp. Okay. Um, versus Leonardo and let's investigate that a little bit further and we'll actually discuss that um, in our um, online session okay so student tasks 5.4 ask yourself the following question does your work question mainstream values does it question it or is it part of mainstream values? How can you use humor or satire to make a statement? Most artworks, um, postmodern artworks, is basically humor or satire. Um, it's a satirical 
uh, notion towards the arts. That's that's how you can determine that it's postmodern. Okay. How can I change the context of existing of an existing image and create a new meaning? So how can you change the context of an existing image and create a new mini meaning? All right. Mainstream, bleh, typical, ordinary. Okay, in art, the dominant or the accepted art practice of the time, the mainstream, yuck. Um, I shouldn't say that, but my personal um, opinion, mainstream, yuck. You know that um, as art students and as your art teacher, mainstream is not something that brings me joy. Um, okay, so if you use an appropriation in your art making, you could be tempted to think of art history as one giant supermarket of goodies to plunder. Right, so let's say there's um, a student in our class and, and you know what, art is just, you know, you're not liking it. The more that you learn about it, the more you distrust, you know, you um, distrust the, the art academy, the art values, the traditions, and it's kind of annoying. So maybe now you need to view it as it's a supermarket, go and plunder. Go and um, go and plunder. Look at these images. How can you change it? What can you add to this? Now, you don't necessarily have to be really good at drawing. You don't necessarily have to be really good at painting. Okay, you can actually make images artwork, okay, by using other artists and adding things to it, okay? Adding collage, cutting, pasting, um, get, do it, do it. It's really, really fun, okay? Um, the important question to ask yourself is, what am I trying to say? With digital media, it's extremely easy to copy images, okay? The challenge, all right, the challenge for any artist is to use an image in order to say something new or meaningful. It's just copy and paste if you haven't done anything to it and you haven't created anything new or meaningful, okay? It's going to fall flat on its bottom if you have not changed it in a way that is new or meaningful. If you've copied and pasted, wrong, Okay, so art is making something out of nothing and selling it. Majority of others don't sell anything, so I hate to burst your bubble. <laughs> it's very hard to sell things unless you're an accomplished artist. All right, hopefully in our lifetime that changes. The postmodern frame raises questions of power, authority, and focuses on ideas that challenge dominant values and views of history. As an art maker, the postmodern frame encourages you to release your inner rebel. Love it. Tear down the structures that define everything and question authority. Subvert the dominant paradigm. But remember, a representative of the dominant paradigm will critically evaluate your work. So you need to make sure that if you are tearing down systems, if you are poking the bear, that you can support yourself with your critical and historical studies. That you cannot just sit there and say, well, I just don't like it, so I just painted over it. Or I just really like it because she wasn't wearing a pink dress, so I added a pink dress. Um, these are superficial answers. You can't do superficial. It has to be in-depth, and you need to support yourself with am ammunition. You're going to war. If you're going to war, okay, you're going to war against these people, all right, you need to have some ammo. All right, so prepare yourself. That's what you're doing. You're preparing yourself. When you're doing this, it can be really tricky in the sense that you may actually fail, and that's happened to me personally. I did that at uni, and I failed because I didn't have enough ammo to support my conceptual meaning, my conceptual strength, and it fell flat on its bottom. You need to make sure if you're going to war and you're a rebel, okay, you need to have ammo. All right, so student task 5.5, what is subjectivity? Very, very interesting. What is subjectivity? How do social ideas influence the making of artworks? How do social ideas influence the, the making of artworks? What does the term semiotics mean? Is there such a thing as good art or bad art? Discuss. Oh, my God. Is there good art, bad art? Oh, yes, there is. We are going to discuss that further in our online class, in our online session. We are going to discuss good art and bad art. I'm surrounded 
um, <laughs> uh, I've culled, and you should do this, um, in your social media. There are certain people that um, think that they practice good art because for whatever reason. Um, but I find it kitsch. Um, and we'll discuss that. Is there good art or bad art? Yes, there is. Let's uh, answer these questions. Maybe have something ready to go for question four in student task 5.6 because that's going to be a really good um, session for the students, our online session. Okay, that is the postmodern frame.